Okay, Christ, be our light. Let's go. you to come upon this room today and everybody watching us by Facebook Live. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you give us each and every day and the simple grace that you say to us that we are never, ever alone. That no matter where we are, no matter what sanctuary of hurt or pain that we are in, that you are in that sanctuary with us. Father God, we thank you for that ever presence that you have with us. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. With that being said, let's welcome one another. I'd like to welcome everybody on Facebook Live. My name is Pastor Anthony. This is the first congregational church right here in Bay Shore. We thank you for all coming. We have many, many people here that will sing praises to the Lord. We hope that at home that you're able to do that with us. Unfortunately, because of what we're in, we're in. But you know what? God makes a way. Amen? God makes a way. God makes a way. And with that being said, let us remind ourselves that we are frail people, that we need God. Sometimes we think we got to do it all by ourselves because we think we're that strong. With that being said, let us ask the Lord for mercy as we sing. Hold us up and lift us up. Father God, we thank you for the time that you are always present to us. Father God, we thank you for the times that maybe we're not where we should be and we'll do what we're supposed to do. We say, Lord, have mercy.
give us our invocation prayer. Together we're going to ask the FCC Music Ministry to lead us in a song called Eagle's Wings. It's, it happens to be my favorite song of all Christian songs right now. It was introduced to us at one of our healing services that we have here on Thursday nights. It's just such a beautiful song. Bask in it. The words will be up on the screen. Please sing along. Lift up your voice. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31 says, hey, don't you know? That he's still in charge. That he never grows weary. Amen. That even young people are going to get tired and they're going to falter and they're going to hurt. But they, they that wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. And they'll be lifted up as of eagles. And they will soar. It's a message that we need to hear right here and now. And we need to say to the Lord, here I am, waiting, waiting for you. Oh 
ourselves up. It's not reminding of us how much we are sinners. It's reminding us of how much God loved us. Bask in that, and He will raise you like the eagles. all have fallen short because we've all sinned the Bible teaches us that if you are straight and narrow and you do all the right things every single day and you follow every law and you fall short of one you are guilty of them all so who can be saved who when Jesus was asked that question he said with man, it's impossible. But Matthew, 20, Matthew 19, 26 tells us this. But with God, all things are possible. Be grieved for me. 
knew the price of one lost soul was more than wealth could buy, and if redemption were ever born, only love would satisfy. Chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. Then one of the criminals who was hanged blasphemed him, saying, You are the Christ. Save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? We indeed justly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds. But this man, he has done nothing wrong. Then he said to him, Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Its words are true. You may be seated in the house of God.
how awesome it is for us to all gather together, whether it be virtually, or whether it be in the house of God. We all know that the house is wherever of God is wherever you're at, amen? So if you're in your kitchen right now, you may be seated in the house of God. If you're in the living room of the basement, if you're in, well, maybe not the bathroom, but if you are, kind of weird, but okay, if you want to watch a service from there, that's a good thing. Bottom line is, wherever you're at, he is. He knows our every move. He knows what we are thinking right now, what we thought five minutes ago, what we will think five minutes from now. This God knows you so intrinsically, it says that he can count the numbers of hair that you have on your head. Holy moly. For those of you that have hair, that is incredible that God would know us so well. We thank all our people that are running our program this evening. I want to thank especially Deacon Craig for coming out and, and doing this Facebook Live for us. I want to thank our music ministers from all over here and over here, and especially Gerard. I thank you for putting this all together for us. And Danny, wherever you're at, thank you so much. I want you to know that Gerard and I have served in ministry for Let's give a shout out years, a long time. And I won't even say what Maureen and I was serving for that many years also, but we are so pleased and blessed to bless FCC and what we're all about here. Our Lenten journey for this year in our church is called Vision. Vision, who do you think you are? And whose are you? Not only do you think who you are, but whose do you belong to? Because once you recognize whose you are, there is a power in that. There's a confidence in that. Amen? There's a way that you feel like, okay, if God is with me, we all know the verse, Romans 8, 31. Good. If God is for us, who could be against us? Today we see a vision of Jesus, this beautiful words. Matter of fact, one of my, my first book that came out is about this particular subject. I wrote about the man, the thief. I found it to be so exhilarating because here's the deal. The thief watched Jesus get condemned. Amen? Matter of fact, the both of them did. The two thieves that were on either side of Jesus saw Jesus get condemned. They saw him take up his cross. They saw him march down Via Dolorosa because one was in front and one was in back. Picture that. This is the thief in the front, the one that speaks here. And he's looking back at Jesus as he falls. And as, a, as he looks up at the people and he blesses the woman, he looks up at Jesus as he so kindly touches the face of his mom. He hears the crowd roaring against this man. He knows as the thief I've committed many crimes against these same people and they're not shouting at me. They're shouting at him. And he must have said to himself, why? Why are they doing this? Through the pain and the anguish that the thief goes through as he marches down, leading the pack of those to be crucified that day. Picture it, if you would. Picture as if you were the thief. And you look back and you could see this man who you know did nothing wrong being so compassionate to his people. The soldiers push you and they beat him. And in your mind you wonder why. The soldiers curse at you but they spit at him. And you wonder why. And you keep on going. And you finally get to the place called the skull or Golgotha. And you are rustled to the ground with the beam that is on you. And you watch as this man named Jesus is also rustled to the ground. But they do it a little bit more harsh with him. Wonder why. 
and they begin to raise your cross beam up. Picture as if you were the thief. And you get up to the top rung and it, it jolts you into place. And you begin to hear and the screams of the man below. And you look down and in your pain and your suffering, as bad as it is, you wonder why. And you see this man named Jesus being raised and he's screaming the same the way you scream in pain. And one of the things that you first hear him say is, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And you wonder why. The other thief is put up just as harshly as you were but not as harshly as you saw them do it to Jesus. And you wonder why. The other thief cries out, if you are the son of God, command this all to be over and, and throw your angels here. Take us off this cross. Take us out of this situation. How many people know that when you pray, you shouldn't be praying about getting out of the situation. You should begin praying to get through the situation. Amen. James 1, 2 says, count it all joy. Even when it hurts and even when it's harsh and even when it's bad, count it all joy because through that suffering, you will learn. Through that suffering, you'll be in solidarity with me. But the first thief there screamed out and says, get me out of here. I don't want to be here. And if you think you are who you say you are, then you can do it. I love the spirit of expectation, the prayer of expectation. And the other thief looking over says, don't you have any fear of God? Which means that through the walk, through the journey, he met God. How many of you know that it's along the way that you'll find God? It's along your suffering, and your pain, and your hurt, that you'll find God. You may not see him in this moment right now of tragedy. You may not see him in this moment of hurt. But when you look back, you say, Lord, you were there. And you recognize him. How many of you know that it's along the way that you can see what it means to be compassionate? Because as you struggle and, and hurt, the best way to not negate the pain, but to aid the pain is to lend a hand to somebody else in pain. Amen? That's the recipe of God. And he says, do you not know? Don't you fear God? This man has done nothing. We deserve what we're doing. How many of us know that we have to shed and confess and say, Lord, I ain't no good. I've done a lot wrong and I'm not going to meet the expectations of you. But I know. I know. And I know that I know that the reason why you are here today on that cross, Lord, this is the thief talking, is because you're taking that pain from me, amen. Dr. Jimmy Lee just sang a song, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall never perish but have eternal life. Well, that's a nice scripture verse, but it comes with baggage, amen? Jesus had to die for that. Jesus had to become death. And this thief recognized that. And he looks over to him and he says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There's a lot of debate on Jesus' answer. Is the thief in heaven right now? Did he go that day because of the comma situation? 
You see, if the comma is this way, if it's assuredly I tell you today, comma, you will be in paradise. That means he's waiting for everybody to be for the last day. Amen. If it's the other way, assuredly I say to you, comma, today you'll be in, with me in paradise. It means at that moment he's being in paradise. People debate about kind of dumb stuff. All I know is that he's in paradise. Amen. All I know is that when Jesus makes the word known, you are where you've got to be. When Jesus says it, it's done. Today, I will be with you. Today, I am with you. Maureen sang a beautiful song back in the day. It was called Tomorrow Now. Remember that? And the song was about, hey, you know, you can talk about it today and say, okay, I'll, I'll come to the Lord tomorrow. I'll deal with it tomorrow. This thief knew that tomorrow was now. And he had to say to Christ, I need you. Where are you? Where are you? Is the t today the day that you say to the Lord, I, I, I ain't, uh, uh, I need you now. I need you right now. Matthew 28, 20 says, I am with you always, even until the end of time. Do we really believe that? As we struggle the day to day, you know, we can look back at this and see the history. Amen. This is a beautiful history. It's a beautiful story, beautiful love story. But if we can't glean any kind of contemporary wisdom from it, it's just that. It's a history story. But if we can get a, a bit, a glimpse of contemporary wisdom from it, then when you walk out of here, you are different from when you walked in. When you shut down your virtual Facebook, whatever the heck you're on, when you shut that down, you'll be different. Because something happened. And here's the difference. We're all in a collective pain today, right? Amen. Together, we're all wondering what's going to happen. When do we get back to normal? When is going to happen? Why do we wear masks? Why do we do a vaccine? This guy, this guy's cheating. This guy does this. We're, there's so much craziness in our world. We are all, as the church, being crucified. And if you don't see that, you don't see what's reality. We're being told to, shh, let's not talk about Jesus. And I say it's time, as I talk to all the churches in Bayshore, it's time that we have the courage to be as the thief and say to the other thief, you need to have some fear of God and you need to stand up. And you need to tell God who and what you believe him to be. And he will turn to the church and he will say, Surely, I tell you, today, you will be with me in paradise. But you've got to have the courage of the thief to come against that which is coming against. To push away the fear. To not allow fear to hide your vision of who God is back to my vision. Spirit of the living God, I ask you to enter into each person's mind right now. Help us to understand that it's simply grace that justifies us. It's simply grace that sanctifies us. It's simply grace that'll take us through no matter what we're going through, it'll take us through. Help us to count on it. Help us to say, it's not me anymore, Lord, it's you. I need you to take care of this. Help me as an individual recognize it's not about who I am, but whose I am. I belong to the Most High God, and I will stand for that. Help us as church to stand up like the thief and say, do you not have any fear of God? And turn to him and say, will you remember me? You know what's really freaky is that in my word is Jesus didn't say hey did you say your prayers today how many times you go to church 
How many times do you do the right thing? Do you sin? Jesus didn't ask any questions. You know what he did? He put it aside and he said, today. Sometimes we get in our own way, amen? Sometimes religion gets in its own way. And they set up these barriers. You got to do this and then this and then this and then this. This is saying, all you got to do is ask. All you got to do is say, I believe. If that's where you're at right now, at home, and you've prayed with us here at FCC, and if you're sitting here, and you've never said to Jesus, look, I need you now. If you've never said to Jesus, look, I've done a lot of things wrong. If you've never read that Jesus loves you, if you've never heard Jesus say, as he said in Matthew 11, 28, 30, come to me, all you who are laboring heavy burden, and I shall give you rest. If you've never brought yourself and surrendered and said, I can't do this by myself no more, Maybe tonight's the night, and so I invite you. Maybe with your eyes closed and your head bowed. Maybe you just say right there in your kitchen, maybe through the tears and the anguish of financial hardship, maybe through the tears and the anguish of not knowing if you should send your kid to school or not, maybe through the tears and anguish of not knowing who to trust in government, Maybe through the tears and anguish that you feel about racial injustice. Maybe through the tears and anguish that you just found out that somebody in your family has cancer. Maybe through all of that tear you finally say, I can't do this. And I don't want to do it no more. And the reason why I shed tears is because I know there is so much pain in the world. And it's crying out for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hear him say to you tonight, assuredly, I am with you and you will be with me. Hear him say tonight, come to me and I will give you rest. Rest in that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what Lent is all about. Let's not beat ourselves up. The world does that enough, amen? The enemy does that enough because he's a liar, he's an imitator and not a creator. Let's look to the Lord like the thief did and recognize for who he is so that we can see whose we are. Together, I'd like you to pray the Our Father in your heart as we sing it.
Maybe just take a little time. Just be a little quiet and bask in that. you feel him tonight? He was so present here. You feel him tingling in that arm, aren't you? Jesus is here. And he promises that if you expect the healing, the healing shall come. I am just so, I'm going to put this mic down. What a service. Amen? I mean, this was like, I mean, I was crying my eyes out, and yet I was looking at each of you, praying for you, each one of you, those of you at home, together we, the Church of Bay Shore, coming together on the one umbrella, saying, we are believers, we believe, and we will not be silent. And that's what we need to do each and every day. So as I tell my parishioners, my people here, my members of my church, when you go to the supermarket, do the right thing. Right, Lou? Put your cart back. Let people see that you believe. Don't just say it. Do it. Somebody needs the door open, open it. Somebody needs a hug, do a hug six feet away, but do a hug. And begin to believe that you are the gospel. That you are the catalyst. That you bring Jesus to the world and together we shall rise there will be a renewal in our church and I don't mean my building this building or that building or that building over there or wherever you're at I'm talking about your kitchen table amen there will be revival father God I ask your blessings on everybody here today Lord God we thank you that you are a holy God that you are a mighty God and that you are worthy of our praise. But we also thank you because when you look at us, you see us as worthy of your love, as worthy of your forgiveness, and as worthy of your holding on to us and being in solidarity with us when we too are being crucified. We bask in that each and every day, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. And our church, the churches throughout Bay Shore, raise up a mighty amen. amen. Please stand as we conclude our service with Holy God, we praise thy name.
great week. Good night, everybody. Jimmy Lee, beautiful. <laughs>